Hi everyone, this is Kieran Oversapping for Filmstorm Studios, and today we're going to be creating a touch system for Android and iPhone devices. And this is going to be using my custom um, touch package that you can actually download from my website. And so you just go to the description, click on the link, download the package, and then import it. And you should get the Filmstorm touch system and the touch controls. And these are just two of the things that it's going to need to make it work and inside this folder is the playmaker actions so these will automatically get put into the um, editor so if I just uh, go to here and then go to the state let's just click on one and you'll see that we now have a film storm touch um, section inside here and these will have the actions that we can use to get um, the information from our joysticks that we will put in in the other um, package so let's go back to the assets, touch controls, and here's the prefabs. So basically this is just a little um, joystick that we can pop onto a canvas and this will allow us to run the, the, um, the and use the joystick inside Android and iPhone. So let's drag the joystick onto the canvas and here you can see it's popped up properly and that's looking pretty good. If you go to game, you can actually see it sitting there. So let's just resize this guy. So make sure the joystick selected. Come up to the width. Let's just make this 500. And you can see this little square um, has reshaped itself. And we just we're doing this so that way it fits the half of the device correctly. And let's turn off. Oh, hide on release is turned off already. So if you click play, you'll notice that um, it kind of moves around. So what we want to do is just untick that. And basically this is just going to snap it to where we want it to go. So that way when we move left and right down, it's going to stay where it is and it's not going to unbehave. And as you, if we try and click on the right side of the screen, you can't um, activate it. But once you get to halfway, you can actually start to use it. So that way we can have two sticks. You can have one stick on this side and then you can have this stick on this side. But let's go ahead and try and get this stick um, linked up to this character. And this character, um, was created using the 2.5D system. So we still got um, the keyboard controls. So what we need to do is come back to the player model and we need to create a new FSM and this is just gonna be getting the um, axes so we can actually plug that into the movement. So let's come into here. We're just gonna be calling this the uh, to get touch info. It's just going to be gathering all of the information that we need to send to the movement. And we want a, a horizontal float. We want a vertical float. Yeah, vertical. And we also want a vector. We're going to call this the input vector. And that should be perfect. All right, so now if we go to here and let's drag in a get axis, another get axis, and a get vector because these are the three things that we're going to need. And we're going to store the get axis vector as a six multiplier. And let's put it into the input vector. And let's just get the axis of the horizontal. Whoa. Horizontal. Install that as horizontal. And let's get the vertical. And store that as the vertical. And now you'll notice if we go to variables, let's turn on all of the inspectors so that way they appear down here. Let's turn these guys on and let's press play. I'll close this guy. So now you'll notice if I scroll down, so pay attention to here when I'm moving this joystick, you can now see that we're actually getting inputs um, driven perfectly in relation to what's happening. So that's, that's lovely. So now we just need to plug this information that we're getting from the joystick into the movement. So let's go to movement. And this is what we created in the 2.5D tutorial. And we just want to create a float. We're going to say the, the touch. We're going to call this hori for horizontal and touch the for vertical. So let's just link these and let's go touch input vector. And we're gonna put this in here. Perfect. And let's also um, put that in the inspector. So now we can see all of the different variables. 
All right, so now we need to come to here and you can see that we're getting the accesses, but we don't really need to do this anymore because we're gonna get the, the information from the, this other FSM. So let's just go through and let's just minimize these guys and let's just go through each one and quickly turn them off depending on where they are. Where are these guys? There's one and the other one. There's the other one. All right, let's go to the crouching. There's one and there's the other one and this other crouch. There's that one and there's that one. All right, let's just make this a little bit bigger. Perfect. And now we've also got the jump. So we don't need to worry about jump, that vector, and we've also got one under the falling. So let's just turn these two off. So basically every single one of these, we just need to go and relink the, um, we just need to get the variables. So let's just go back to the first one and we're gonna get a get FSM float. And the FSM we're getting is the get axis. We're gonna get the horizontal. I'm gonna store that as the horizontal every frame. Let's just copy and paste after and we're gonna get the vertical, paste the vertical. And now we're essentially doing the same thing our get axis did. So let's just grab these guys, copy them over, and we just paste them quickly into all of the other ones. So now these will populate the same variables and link them like we just had them because these, these variables are actually um, pushing through the um, where are we? The animator floats. So we're getting the horizontal value from the touch system now, and we're putting that into the input X, which is driving the animations, if that makes sense. So that's all in there. We've got all of our get FSMs. So now we just need to link up our input vector. So let's get FSM vector three. We're gonna be getting the get axis, the input vector, store that as the input vector every frame. And let's just copy this guy and paste that into falling. And we should be pretty much all good to go. So let's go and press play. And now you'll see that we can actually drive our character. Um, all good. So now we jump. And he seems to be having a little jumping fit but that's okay because we just probably have to change a couple of um, variables inside uh, our movement. So this is probably the best place to do it. So when he lands, let's just set the float value of the um, vertical to zero. So that way he, he definitely, <laughs> he definitely will um, be zeroed out. So that, that should probably fix it. So let's go to here, let's jump. There we go. So that's looking good now. So the jump, lands. So now we can even we can even hook up a button that um that will handle uh, the crouch as well. So and you can see that wherever we click will actually drive the animation. So that's pretty cool. So now we just need, let's just create a little button that when we click will actually um, enable the crouching. And what do you know, we've actually got a button ready. So let's just bring this guy out. Perfect. And this button, let's just uh, give it a, a different, let's just make it a simple circle. Perfect, so when you go to the game, once we click this, this is gonna take us to the, the crouch. So let's go back to our player model and let's create, go to the movement and you'll probably see we've got get button down and that's gonna take us to crash. So we're pressing C on the keyboard. So we just need to go and look up the film storm touch system. We're gonna say get button down and our button name is, let's go to here. The button name will be uh, crouch, as is the um, the uh, keyboard command. So let's go to the player model again, and we're going to say get crouch, and on that event we're going to say to crouch. Let's copy this guy, paste this here, and we're going to say 
to here and to here. Except instead of going to crouch, we're going to go to standing. Turn this guy on to standing as well. Perfect. So now this should properly link up. There we go. So now we've gone into crouch and we can still move backwards and forwards. The jumping is a little bit um, sensitive. So what we could actually do is um, probably we could um, link, we could um, reduce the float. What am I saying? Yeah, we could reduce the float in the movement. So if you go to here, you'll actually see the it has to be greater than 0 0.6. So we could make that more like 0 0.8. And that will um, really help him when he's um, jumping. So let's go to here. So that way when the player wants to jump, he really has to push up and the computer won't get confused. So let's go down, where are we? To jump, let's make these two crouch ones 0 0.8. And where is this guy? And to jump is 0 0.8. Perfect, so let's close this guy out. Let's save it and let's press play. And now you'll notice that we can jump, we can press the crouch, we can go backwards and forwards, we can still jump, we'll go into crouch. And of course, when you're playing with two hands, it will make it a bit more seamless as well. Now let's jump again. And we've pretty much completed the same level by using our touch commands. So basically, if you wanted to export this to your phone, you'd wanna make sure if you go to your build settings, make sure you've switched the platform to Android and build it or add, add the um, scenes. But one thing you probably want to make sure is that you've got if you go to preferences and your external tools, you have to make sure that you've got your Android SDK um, loaded. So if you just um, Google Android SDK, that way you can, um, you can export to Android. And same thing with um, Apple. So you've got the iOS as well. But that's essentially how to create the touch system using my touch, Filmstorm touch um, commands. So if you have any questions, just let me know, send me an email. But um, that's essentially it. So make sure when you, once you download it, just um, pretty much do what I've told you and it should all work. All right guys, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.